Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be comparing Photoshop's Blend If feature with GIMP's Color to Alpha feature. This tutorial was requested by one of my subscribers so thank you for that request and you guys can always request tutorials in the comments section of the video. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.18 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com as always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing, which is a bestseller on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com, and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to my GIMP Help Center app, ebooks such as my GIMP book of layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership off with a seven day free trial and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Photoshop has a popular feature known as Blend If. It allows you to essentially blend multiple layers together based on either a luminance setting or a color setting. And a lot of people have asked over the years if GIMP has an equivalent to that. Well, the answer is actually yes. It's not a carbon copy of Photoshop's Blend If, but it is called Color to Alpha. It's a Gaggle filter found in GIMP. And this feature, much like Blend If in Photoshop, is going to allow you to blend multiple layers using transparency based on either a luminance or a particular color. So I'm going to compare these two features with this tutorial by having both Photoshop and GIMP opened up here and I'm going to go back and forth between the two programs. For starters I'll do a quick demonstration inside of Photoshop CC 2020. This is the latest version of Photoshop. So I've got a photo here and I got this stock photo free from pexels.com so I'll include a link to that in the description of the video. And what I did was I created a new layer and I drew a black to white gradient on this layer. And so first I'll demonstrate how the luminance property works with blend if inside of Photoshop. Photoshop. So for example, let me come up to this layer, which is just named layer one, and I'll right click on it and go to blending options. So here we have the layer style dialog inside of Photoshop. And by the way, I'm not going to spend too much time inside of Photoshop here. But under blending options, we've got blend if down here. And the first option by default is gray. And so this essentially allows you to tell Photoshop what luminance value you want to be transparent. So you can use this slider on the left and that's going to make black transparent. You can see it's a rough transition for now. And if I use the other side, it's going to make white transparent. You also have the underlying layer feature. I'm not going to get into that for this tutorial because GIMP does not have an equivalent for that really. But I do want to show you if I drag this inwards and I hold the Alt key and I click on this, you'll see that allows this to feather out a little bit. And so we've got the black fading to transparency with partial transparency in between. That's what that feature does. Of course, you can hold the Alt key and do the same on this side. I'll also come over here to red. So you can do this for each of the red, green, or blue color channels in an image. So now if I click on red, instead of this only working on black or white, this is actually going to work on whatever color you tell us to work on. So actually for now, let me click OK to apply what we did here to the gradient layer. And I'm just going to hide that. And then I'm going to unhide this other layer I have in here, which is a color wheel. So I'll click on that layer, right click and go to blending options. And once again, under blend if, I'm gonna to go to red. So now if I drag the white slider inward, you'll see that's going to get rid of all the colors in here that contain any red, including that white. And if I go the other way, it's going to do the opposite. So everything containing cyan is going to disappear. Same if we do that through each one of these color channels. So right now this is green. You'll see that causes the green to disappear. Of course, if I hold Alt and drag, that is going to create this sort of feathering or fading transition. If I do the opposite for green, it's going to do the opposite, which is magenta. So all that's left now you'll see here is red and blue. So I'll click cancel to exit out of that. You guys get a pretty good idea of how the blend if option works in Photoshop. For those of you familiar with Photoshop, you'll already know how this tool works. Now let's jump over to GIMP 2.10.18 and I'll show you how color to alpha is similar. So I'll minimize Photoshop and let's open up GIMP. So here I have that same photo. Right now I don't have any layers open, so let's create a new layer. And this one's already named gradient from when I did this earlier. I'll make sure this is filled with transparency and click OK. 
Then I'll come over here and under this tool grouping, which right now you guys might have bucket fill if you're using 2.10.18, I wanna click on gradient and make sure my color is set to black and white. And over here I have my gradient set to foreground to background RGB, so right here. And my shape is set to linear, so I'll just draw this gradient. I do have an entire tutorial on the gradient tool, so definitely check that out if you want more information on how to use this tool. But once I've drawn this gradient and got it into place, I'll hit the enter key, that'll apply that. So with this gradient layer still selected, now let's come over to colors, color to alpha. So this is GIMP's equivalent. So you'll see that the filter dialog is definitely different than it was in Photoshop. So instead of having two different sliders and adjusting those sliders to either make the white or the black transparent, you've got this color box here and then you've got the transparency and opacity threshold sliders. So first let's start with the color box. So right now this is set to white and what this is saying is that anything that contains white is going to be fully transparent. If I wanted to switch that to black, I can click on this color here, the color box, and just drag the color until it reaches black or type zeros, six zeros in the HTML notation, and I'll click OK. So now anything that contains black will be transparent, and if there is some black, it'll be partially transparent. Well, you'll remember with Photoshop's blend if option, you could sort of set how much feathering occurred or what pixels were gonna be partially transparent versus fully transparent. You can do that here as well. So here we have the transparency threshold. If I turn this up, you'll see that is going to increase the amount of fully transparent pixels here. So let me just set that back to zero. You can see there's still partial transparency. And if I go all the way to 100, or 1.0 I should say, that'll make everything totally transparent. On the other hand, the opacity threshold slider allows me to bring this in a little bit. And as I do that, you can see that now that's starting to bring back some of that partial transparency. So that's essentially cutting off the point at which pixels become fully transparent or partially transparent. And the more I bring this in, you'll see the more it's just the darkest of the dark pixels that are going to contain transparency. Of course, we can adjust these two sliders together. And you can see that as I do that, it's sort of bringing in the point at which that transparency starts, as well as how soft that transition is or how hard that transition is between the opaque and the transparent pixels. So I'll set this back to the defaults. So in GIMP, using the color to alpha filter, that is essentially how you adjust luminance values to be either opaque or transparent, just like blend if inside of Photoshop. On the other hand, what if you want to make certain colors transparent? Well, we can do that as well with this filter. So let me cancel out of this for now, and I'm going to just delete this gradient layer. And I'll come over here, I already have a color wheel opened up, so I'm just gonna click and drag this into our composition and release. That will drop this as a layer. So now with this dropped buffer layer still selected, I'll come over here to colors, color to alpha. Right now this is set to white, so all the white has disappeared. However, if we want this to be a color, I can click on it. And let's say, for example, we want this to be red. We want all the red to disappear in here. What I can do to start is first just drag this to the bottom left corner. That'll make this black. And then what I can do is come up top to the red slider. And if I click and drag this all the way to the full amount here, which is going to be 100, or if you have this set to 255, it'll be 255. I'll keep this set to 100. So if I drag R all the way up to 100, that is pure red, and you can see all the red has disappeared in here. So you'll remember with blend if inside of Photoshop, if you drag that white slider in, it got rid of red. If you drag the black slider in, it got rid of the opposite color, which was cyan. Well, in GIMP, instead of doing that, you can just turn the red slider down and drag up the other two sliders, so G and B, to be 100 and that will get rid of the opposite color there, which is going to be cyan. So this creates the same effect, it's just a slightly different approach than the Photoshop approach. On the other hand, if I wanted to get rid of green, I can put both red and blue down to zero, put green all the way up to 100, and you'll see here the green is now disappeared, it's now transparent. And if I wanted to do the opposite of green, I can drag green to zero and drag blue and red up to 100. Now the opposite of green on this wheel here has disappeared and that is going to be magenta, of course. And I'll just finish this off with showing you guys blue. So if I put red and green to zero and blue to 100, that'll get rid of the blue. On the other hand, if I wanted to get rid of the opposite color of blue, which is yellow, 
I'll drag the blue to zero and I'll drag both the green and the red sliders to 100 and now that has caused the yellow to become transparent. So you guys might be wondering, what about that feathering effect that Photoshop had? Well, let's apply this change, so we'll keep the yellow transparent. Now we can play around with the transparency and opacity thresholds. So if I drag the transparency threshold up, you'll see that is changing how soft that transition is. So it's making the change from the opacity to the full transparency, either softer or harder, depending on what value you give this. If you turn this up further, it'll make that a harder transition. If you turn it down, it'll make it a softer transition. So I'll click OK to apply that, and I'm actually just going to delete this layer. So there's one last thing I want to show you guys with color to alpha that you might find useful. So let's say I wanted to take the transparency and just change it to a different color along the color wheel. I can come over here and click on this color, and right now this is set to LCH. But if I switch this over to HSV, that'll bring up what's called the hue slider. And now I can sit here and drag the hue slider. And as I do that, you'll see the transparency will move around the color wheel. So that just allows me to easily shift my color and just change the position of that transparency. All right, so I'll click cancel and I'm gonna cancel out of this. And I'll also delete this dropped buffer layer. So now that you've seen a direct comparison between the Blend If tool in Photoshop and the Color to Alpha tool in GIMP, you may be asking, what is the practical example of this? When would I actually use this? Well, there are two main applications for using this. Number one is maybe you just want to erase a particular color from a layer and have that transparency then allow you to see the layer below or just the transparency below. The other application is blending a texture from one layer with another layer. So for example, let's say you have an object, a graphic on a layer below, and you have something like a wall, which we have here on the layer above. The color to alpha feature allows you to blend the texture from the layer above onto the graphic from the layer below and that makes the graphic appear as if it's on the wall. So it creates this sort of cool blended texture effect and I'll show you how to do that now. So I have this Wilbur graphic, obviously this is the logo for GIMP and I'm going to click and drag this onto our wall photo and release. I'll hit the M key to grab my move tool and I'm just going to click and drag this upwards here and I can click and hold the move tool here in my move tool group and click the alignment tool. And then I'll click on here to align this object. So I'll just click relative to image and click the center align. Next, what I'll do is I'll move this layer below the photo layer. And the next step here is an important one. You're going to want to click on this photo layer, right click, and make sure this has an alpha channel. If it's grayed out, it means it already has an alpha channel. If it's not grayed out, it means it doesn't. Make sure you add that. If you don't add an alpha channel, it may crop the final result to the content. You'll see what I mean in a second. So now I'm going to alt click on this dropped buffer layer, which contains our graphic. And by the way, this can be a graphic or text. Just make sure if it is a graphic that you have a transparent background. It's just going to work better that way. I'll hold control and zoom in using my mouse wheel. So when we alt clicked on this dropped buffer layer, which let me just rename this Wilbur, hit the enter key and make sure I'm clicked back on the photo layer. So when we alt clicked on the Wilbur layer, that just created a selection around our object. So once our object is selected, we can now go to colors, color to alpha. And now you'll see what it's doing is it's taking whatever color we have selected now, which is white, and it's saying any white that occurs within this selection area on our photo layer is now going to become transparent. So hold control and zoom in. And by having that be transparent, you could see some cool things happening. For example, these vines are starting to come through in some areas, and it's already making this appear as if the graphic is painted on the wall or at least blended with the wall in some way. But what I can do is I can click on this little eyedropper tool and I can basically select a color from my photo. So let's say I want to use a color from the wall here. And you can see that as I click and drag this little color picker, it's telling the color to alpha filter that it wants that particular color to represent transparency. And as I move it around, it's creating different effects for my graphic. So let's go with this slightly lighter color. So if I hold control and zoom in, You'll see that anywhere that contains this lighter color is now going to become transparent and that's where the graphic is showing through. If I wanted to adjust how much of the graphic came through, I could adjust the transparency or opacity threshold. So if I turn the transparency threshold up, that's essentially saying less and less pixels are going to be considered transparent pixels. On the other hand, if I bring in the opacity threshold, 
you'll see that that will make this much less opaque and therefore more transparent. So if I wanted more of the wall and the texture to show through, I could bring that opacity threshold down. And once I'm satisfied with this, I'll click OK. So I mentioned you can also do this with text and I will add some text to this. So I'll grab my text tool, put the caps lock key on, and I'm just gonna click once up here and type in GIMP. And I'll just change this to Poppins. Let's go with Poppins Bold. Make sure that text is selected there. And I'll increase the size. You can do any color you want for the text. So I'll just go with that right there. I can alt click and that will allow me to move my text around. Maybe we'll go right here. And now I'll click and drag my text layer below that photo layer. Alt click on my text layer, that will select my text. Click on the photo layer. And then one last time go to colors, color to alpha. And now this is once again saying that the color we select is going to create transparency. I'm going to grab my color picker tool and choose a color from the wall here. I'll go with that right there. We can adjust the opacity threshold. And then I'll click OK. I'll hit Control Shift A. And there it looks like we have some text there that's painted on the wall as well next to the GIMP logo, the Wilbur logo here. And both the logo and the text have taken on the wall's texture. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.